In today's video we are going to take a look at some different axes from uh, four different makers. We're gonna take a look at the Swedish makers uh, Gransforsbruk and Hultafors. I have a few uh, different axes from them. We are also going to take a look at some uh, Russian axes, mainly from Toporse but also from uh, Phoenix. Uh, starting with the largest axis and then working our way down to the uh, smallest ones. Uh, and the biggest axe is um, this one. This is the Phoenix Drovosec 2. Uh, it is 2.4 kilos. This is a heavy axe. Uh, easily the heaviest one I have with me today. Um, not sure how well you can see it. This is what it looks like. Uh, sturdy leather sheath, really sturdy. And this is the axe itself, or the axe head. It's a long handle, uh, it is narrowed down, it's quite thin at the, at the very bottom here, so to say. Um, it's sort of a pommel for a you know, sturdy and a great grip when doing some, some heavy uh, chopping, like felling trees and the likes. I mean, that is probably what this axe is, is mainly designed for, given its weight and um, length. Next up is... Uh, actually, it's also a Russian axe. The next one being... the Topor Sib Moose or Toporsib Elk, maybe it's also called. Should be one of these, I think. Maybe it is actually this one. This is the Toporsib Moose or Elk. Uh, it's quite a long handle as well, a lot thicker, not really that narrow down at the bottom of the handle. Um, I know that these axes, all the axes from Topper Sib, some people do find the handles to be a tad too thick. Me personally, I don't have a problem with it, but I, I know there are people that, that think the handles are a bit on the thick side. So this one is 1.8 kilos, so it's quite a bit uh, lighter than the Drovosec 2 from, uh, from Phoenix. Uh, still, I mean, not a light lightweight axe by any means, but uh, you know, if you compare it to the Drovosec, this one is, is quite a lot lighter. Also made for, I mean, felling trees, uh, delimbing, branching, splitting. Uh, I mean, pretty much anything you want to do with an axe, to be honest. Uh, impeccable fit and finish, and that goes for the, for the Drovosec too as well. I mean, the fit and finish is just... Outstanding. Next up, I mean, if we are indeed going by weight and not the length of the handle, the next one should be the Maral 2. But I think I'm gonna go with uh, with Lynx, uh, regardless. This is the Lynx. The uh, uh, let's see, 75 centimeter version, uh, meaning that the overall or the total length. This one is, you know, I, I don't have all the specs to be honest, but I'd say that this one is probably around 1.5 kilos or something like that. It's it's a fair bit lighter than the than the most, and especially uh, a lot lighter than the than the Phoenix Drovosec 2. It's also made for, uh, well, felling, medium-sized trees, splitting, delimbing, branching, I mean, er er all the things to do with an axe, to be honest. I, I can say the same about pretty much all of these axes, to be honest. Uh, also impeccable fit and finish, and that's the same with all the, the axes I have from Topor Sib. Uh, they are very consistent. Uh, kind of thick handle, as I stated before, they're all thick, but uh, 
Uh, it's, it's a really, really nice axe in my opinion. Uh, you can do a lot of, a lot of things with it, uh, despite it being fairly uh, lightweight, so to say. Next one up is one of my my favorite axes in that particular length. Let's see where we have it. Should be this one. And all the all the axes from Proporsive, they come with this. Uh, um, uh, yeah, what do you call this? Like a. Oh, for once my English vocabulary lacks a word, not a sheath, but like the thing you put the axe, the complete axe in. And this is uh, this is waterproof, and uh, overall it's just it's pretty nice carrying carrying bag <laughs> for the for the axe. Uh, regardless, so what we have here is uh, the Topor Sib Maral 2. Uh, I think the handle is about 62 centimeters, somewhere around that. And the axe itself is 1.7 kilos. So given its uh, given its you know overall length and size, this is a, a pretty heavy axe. You know it's it's a, a heavy hitter at that. With this axe, you can also do like with others, pretty much anything. I wouldn't you know try to take down too large trees or anything like that because you know given the length of the handle, it would probably be maybe not the absolute most comfortable experience. But uh, make no mistake, this is one hell of a serious axe uh, that will not let you down. Really a heavy hitter and, and kind of, you know, it's really, you know, wide compared to uh, to the Lynx, to the Sable. Uh, and, uh, oh wait, the Sable we haven't seen yet. That one comes after this one. But uh, even compared to the Moose, I think this one is actually... Uh, even wider and it's scary sharp all of these axes are scared they are shaving sharp and usually after having done a lot of work with these axes they are still shaving sharp I love the axes from Topo Save as you can see I, I do have quite a few of them uh, they may not be the you know the cheapest axes but uh, the fit and finish and the actual performance is uh, Oh, it's in a, in a league of their own, to be honest. Next up, I think we should do with the, with the Sable, which I guess is this one. Yep. This is a... Yep. So this is the first generation uh, Topper Sib Sable. And it is... I think the length of this one is uh, 65 centimeters. So like this, and the weight is, I think, somewhere around 1.4, somewhere in that vicinity. And this axe has a bit of a different grind than the newer versions of the of the Topper Sib axes. I'm not sure if we have the focus going on here right now, but it has. A bit of a you know like a secondary bevel of sorts here. It's not like the complete full uh, convex like they do it these days. This one has a a small you know bevel of sorts. It's, it looks actually kind of stylish in my opinion. But uh, they came to the conclusion that uh, the it was tougher and with also better edge retention uh, with like the full with a full convex instead and uh, I mean I haven't had any issues with this one uh, then again I haven't had any issues with any of my other Topo Siva axes as well uh, this one is also the only Topo Siva I have that is in beech wood the other handles are in uh, in ash uh, some ash types uh, and uh, that is also the same with uh, with the drovo sec that I shot the very first one the heavy hitter at 2.4 kilos that one is also with an ash handle. This is the only axe I have with a 
beech wood, but I've done a lot of work with this one. Uh, probably the, the Topo sieve that I've been using the most since I have owned this one for the longest time. But I have had no problems with uh, with the beech being in any way like, uh, you know, fragile is probably not the right word, but you know, it is, it has held up great. Uh, and I should probably mention now that there are probably a lot of people asking about, or not asking, but thinking, what, what, what is it that you have on the handle? And what I use on my handles is uh, CCM cloth tape, uh, like the thinnest possible uh, version there is. And I also use paracord, 3mm paracord, uh, for like uh, shock uh, reduction and, uh, you know, just to protect if you do overstrike. I am fairly sure, I mean, I'm fairly accurate when I do work with my axes, but uh, I don't mind to, you know, better safe than sorry. And if I do lend my axe to, uh, you know, a friend or my, my wife or you know, family or whatever, uh, I, I do, you know, I do prefer being on the safe side. Then again, I do have some other beaters that I can, that I can lend them. But this is, you know, I, th I think it, it might not look, you know, really, that nice or good, but uh, this is this is just a a routine or maybe even a ritual I have when I you know get a new axe these days. Uh, so that is why they all look like this, and uh, I will talk about it, uh, especially on two axes that have built-in steel uh, collars. But we'll get to that uh, later. But this was the the Sable. 65 centimeter first generation from Topper And next up. Um, I guess we could go over to some Swedish brands now. This is the small, not the smallest, but the, the small, the middle size, there is also a large uh, splitting axe from Idansfors Bruk with, now we're getting into hickory handles he said uh, and this one is yeah whatever as you can see from the design of this one this is a pure splitting axe you know, a really, you know purpose-built splitter and that is the only thing I use this axe for uh, I don't go around trying to you know fell crease or uh, delimb or branch or anything this is this is my one purpose splitting axe and I think it does splitting fairly well uh, the handle length is uh, 60 centimeter I believe and the weight is 1.6 kilos so it's not it's not that heavy, to be honest, uh, and it's not that long. I think the large splitting axe, or the largest, is point is two point two point three or two point four kilos with a seventy centimeter uh, handle. Uh, so that would pack a lot more, you know, strength than than this one. Still, I mean, this is this does the job fairly well, but it is a you know, it's kind of a small axe for, for a splitter. Then again, it is called the small splitting axe. Um, I think we're gonna continue with, uh, with the Swedish axes. Uh, next one being, not this one. Next one being... Uh, this one perhaps. Yeah. This is in Swedish this one is called uh, Gransforsbruk's small uh, large forest axe but in the US I think they named it the Scandinavian forest axe same specs same model just different names hickory as with all the handles from uh, Gransforsbruk's uh, the overall length is you know what, I'm not really sure. Somewhere around 60 or 65 centimeters, I would guess. Uh, the head, uh, the weight, or the total weight, I would say is 
uh, this is I should probably know this as I am from Sweden and this is a Swedish axe but I would say that it is probably around 1.3 kilos or something like that it's it feels really really light in hand uh, the purpose of this axe well it's a multi-purpose axe uh, kind of lightweight you should be able to you know fell smaller types of trees uh, split wood delimbing the branching all the usual stuff um, nothing nothing special like that but it is a it is a nice axe and with like with all the axes from Gensel Spruks uh, the handle is uh, sort of on the thin side, thin side, and I mean it's it's very different if you compare it to like the axis from Toprosi, which is the handles are a lot thicker than what you see what you see here. But a, a lightweight uh, axe that is you know easy to work with, uh, very you know traditional in a sense, yeah. This one. This is the Hultafors Obu Forest Axe, part of uh, Hultafors uh, Premium line. And this axe is uh, is very multi-purpose, I'd say. Let's see. Uh, the weight of this one is, you know what, I'm not sure what the weight is. Probably it feels a lot like the like the, uh, the the large forest axe or the Scandinavian forest forest axe, which is I, I don't know what what is what the specs are on this. To be honest, probably oh wait, does it say here actually? 0 0.7, and it will be 700. Uh, I wanna. I want to try to check out uh, the specs on this later, but it is a, a kind of a lightweight axe to be honest. Uh, it got some nice grind lines, or grind lines, it's got some nice um, finish here. Uh, this one is uh, intended to be you know, a general woods axe, but they also made, made it kind of you know, straight, more like you know, uh, carpenter style. Uh, uh, design so it's it's it should be I haven't done any you know um, woodwork like that or carpentry with it but it is uh, the design lets me know that it should work fairly well for that kind of uh, uh, for those kinds of uh, tasks so to say but it is it is a you know a nice lightweight uh, axe much like the like the large forest axe from um, or, or Scandinavian forest axe from uh, Gdansforsbruks, about the same length as well, I'd say. Next up, yeah, this is a very popular model. This is the Gransvorsbruks small forest axe. Uh, I would reckon that this is one of their their most popular models uh, of them all, since it is uh, lightweight. It's not too too large or too long. I'm not exactly sure what the specs are, to be honest. Um, somewhere around 50 centimeters, maybe. You know, I'm. I should probably have read in on the specs, to be honest, but I. Yeah, I, I didn't, <laughs> but it is, it is, you know, it's easy to, uh, it's kind of easy to bring with you, to throw down in your backpack or, or hang on your, your backpack. It's not too heavy, uh, but still quite a capable axe for uh, felling smaller types of trees, debranching, delimbing, splitting, uh, you know, it's, yeah, all those things to do with an axe, pretty much. 
uh, fit and finish is uh, is pretty good. I think that the quality control is sometimes a bit lacking on Grand Sports Brooks uh, models or, or axes. Then again, I get to pick this in the store, so I can always pick one with uh, with some nice grain orientation, making sure it's you know kind of symmetrical, well fitted, etc. So. I mean the ones that I have are of, of great quality, but I've seen some that I uh, that I think should probably not have left the uh, left the, the factory uh, of sorts. Uh, unlike the axes from from Torpersib, where ev each and every one of the axes has been absolute uh, flawless and impeccable. Um, yeah, we can move on to. Uh, we're moving back to Russia now. So, this one is uh, the Torpor Sib Sable. Uh, so it's pretty much identical in design with, with the previous Sable that I showed you, the 65 centimeter version. However, this one has a handle of uh, 50 centimeter. So this is, and the head is also slightly lighter. So this is just a not a mini miniature, but it's a it's a smaller sable. They do come in like 45, 50, 65, and maybe there's also a 75 uh, centimeter version as well. But this one is uh, the 50 centimeter version. Also quite a you know capable axe at that. Uh, then again, I mean, I, you don't want to felt crease with with handles that are too too short. I mean, you could still do it with this one, but uh, it might not be the most pleasant experience. Uh, but you know, quite a capable axe at that. Final axe from Copper Sieve. Uh. This is the Topper Sieve Saiga. Uh, this one is uh, 44.5 centimeters and it weighs about Damn, I can't remember the specs. Let's say like 1.3 kilos or something like that. I, I'm not really sure, but it is it is quite heavy, uh, especially for its smaller size. I've already done one video showing where I do some pretty heavy chopping with this one. And I mean, it is quite a capable axe, but once again, you know, doing heavy chopping with, with an axe this length it's not always the absolute most, you know, comfortable experience. Um, but this is the one axe that I bring with me in my backpack these days. I used to go with the uh, Dansfors Brooks outdoor axe or the Hultafors uh, Hulton hatchet or axe. Uh, those are actually the last two we have uh, uh, that I have to show you guys. But this one has sort of replaced them. Uh, I mean, it is. It is slightly longer the handle and it is a lot uh, heavier but uh, it's it's so compact that I you know I kind of prefer to bring this one with me uh, these days regardless it's you know the one the type of axe you can really uh, trust and uh, depend on so to say Last 
but not least. See, I have uh, the, the next one is going to be the Ulta Porsche Fulton, and the thing is that I have two of those, and two of the same model, but with slightly different uh, rinds to them because I. Uh, I decided to modify the first one that I got because I thought uh, it was, uh, I thought the grind was sort of too thick. Uh, but I'm going to show you the second one that I, that I got as a replacement axe. This one, uh, this one is a modified version of the Hulton, whereas this one is uh, uh, with its original. Uh, grind and finish. Uh, they both work, you know, exceptionally well. Uh, this one after I did some uh, uh, Some sharpening and buffing to it and this one straight from the box uh, This is a small lightweight axe or hatchet. I think the weight is about uh, a little bit over 500 grams or the head is at least 500 grams uh, or half a kilo uh, small capable axe, uh, comfortable handle. I mean, this is for for a short while. This one replaced my uh, my outdoor axe from from Gans Um But this is, I mean, this is a good axe or a good hatchet, and I do recommend it if you want a lightweight option with a a you know a comfortable handle, hickory, uh, as with most Swedish axes. So, hold uh, on. So this is the last axe we're gonna take a look at today. This is the outdoor axe uh, from Dan Sorsbruk, designed together with uh, Swedish survival expert uh, Lars Felt. This is uh, a very light axe or hatchet. Uh, it got, oh, I forgot to say that for it does come with a steel collar. There is actually a steel collar beneath this paracord and the same goes with the splitting axe from Dan Sorsbruk. Uh, that one also has a now concealed steel collar to it. Um, but like I said, this is a the handle is straight handle, uh, really thin, uh, kind of thin edge here as well. Uh, good for you know some smaller task woodworks etc. Uh, you can also do. I mean, it it packs more of a punch than you can think when you see it. It's easy to underestimate this one. I mean, I, this was my most carried axe for for a few years, and I, I do you know trust it a lot. But it is it is it is lightweight compared to uh, to both Hulton and especially compared to the Saiga from Toprosib. But there are times when you want to have a as light uh, carry as possible, and I mean this one is is always welcome in my backpack. Uh, I know how it performs and it is a, a great user uh, despite looking uh, so so small and light. Don't underestimate it. But I mean compared to the... the compared to this one. Uh, it's a bit of a difference, huh? Well, you can't always bring a 2.4 kilo axe with you in the woods for camping. No need for it either. So that was, you know, a, a quick look at uh, my current users, and I hope to be able to make some videos where I where I show the actual performance of uh, of the different axes. Uh, not sure I can do it today because it's going to get dark pretty soon. It's I have about 30 or 40 minutes left of daylight, but uh, hopefully I can do some some additional comparisons, etc. Um, get the specs right. I'm gonna try to make a uh, make it pop up in the video when I show an axe with the, with the correct uh, specs. Uh, so you don't have. 
Okay, so I thought we could do some uh, some random chopping here before before it gets too dark. So, I mean, this is what we're gonna do now is splitting wood. So let's start with uh, with the one axe that is actually made for for splitting wood, which is the Ransforsbruk's small splitting axe. Uh, let's see what we can do. So that one did indeed split it fairly well. Uh, I'd say. Let's see if you can do the same with something else. Or with the same ease. If I have something in about the same size, the other ones might be bigger. Let's try the topper sim moose, which I haven't tried it much yet. But this was the 1.8 kilo, 75 or 76 centimeter handle. So this is uh, this is you know, a pretty strong axe. I'll see if I can find a good piece of wood. This one. Yep. So let's go with this one. This piece of wood is a bit different than the last one because it's uh, it hasn't been outside like that one, and it is also a bit bigger. And I'm not putting my full force into it, but it's still chops fairly well. The Phoenix. That would be interesting to try too. I haven't actually done any and a splitting with it yet. In fact, I haven't used it a lot at all. I got it like yesterday or the day before that. Let's see if you can find a good piece. Let's go with this one. This is a big one. This could be interesting. Biggest piece for the biggest axe, huh? Okay, let's go. It's a strong piece of tree. This is pretty nice actually. I like this one. Let's try something else. What should we do next? Maybe we should do some. Try the Saiga splitting wood. Let's see, where do we have the Saiga? Let's 
so here we have the Saiga. Could be interesting. One handed splitting. I broke it up pretty good. most even surface here but whatever that's the Saiga Maybe we should try some of the Swedish axes. Oh, we did start with the with the splitting axe, but we could probably go. Uh, let's try the Hulton. Let's see, should I go with the original grind or the, I'll go with the original grind? Doesn't matter really, especially not for splitting wood. But uh, need to find a good piece. Maybe this one. A, a very big axe, not a very big piece of log either. So. So, what should we try next? Let's continue playing with the Phoenix Grovosec 2 because it's a fun axe to, to play with. Polish. If I had only put some extra weight, it would have been split in half with one stroke. Nice. That felt good. Man, I like this axe. So I just want to continue to play a bit with my uh, Drovosec 2 because I find it to be a fun axe to work with. I want to get used to working with this 2.4 kilo heavy beast. So doing some, some random, random chopping here now. Kind of big pieces of wood. Yep.
goddamn knot in the middle of it. See that? This could be an interesting piece. This is a large one. I'm not gonna split this one in half, maybe with one strike. We'll see. Close, but no cigar. This looks like a challenge. Therapy. I'd say. Oops. Oh, I think that's enough for now. I need to drink some water. But this axe... I like this one. It is a lot of fun.